you for joining us for the HBCU Fashion Summit. I am so excited to have our three guests. Danielle Brown, lead fashion professor for Bowie State University. Dr. LaPortia Davis from Tennessee State University and Jane O'Peary, assistant professor from University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. We have a few questions for you. And the first is, tell us a bit about your journey to becoming a professor in a fashion university. So during undergrad, my last semester, my advisor at the time, um, which I have to thank every year from now on, um, approached me and she said, you know, your peers respect you. And as your advisor and your professors, we respect you. And we think you should go into teaching fashion. I looked at her crazy um, and I said, no, I have a fashion degree. I'm, I'm getting ready to graduate. I'm moving to New York. I'm going to design clothes. I don't have time for this teaching thing you're talking about. Um, and she said, I really think you should think about it. We'll pay for your math masters. And I said, no, nah, I don't want my masters. I have my bachelor's is good enough, you know, being young and naive. Um, and she said, really, really think about it. And I turned the position down five times, actually. <laughs> and then she finally, the last two weeks of classes, she said, just do it one semester. And if you really hate it, then I will personally buy your plane ticket to New York. And I said, okay. Um, and I have not stopped since. So she was right. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. So my, my journey to become a fashion professor started after my undergrad. Uh, having studied in Africa, I actually did home economics. I love everything home economics. And I loved more the fashion part. I am um, that who would critique that, okay, this sleeve is not well done. Those gathers are not even, uh, the zipper is at the wrong place. So I just love, and I love, I love uh, drafting the styles. I would see a fashion and come and draft it and just uh, do an illustration of it and try even to make for my, my, my doll those days growing up. So my mom told me, you could be a very good fashion teacher. And so starting to teach in high school and moving on to do my grad school, I just wanted to impart the skills that I have into the next generation. I didn't just want to have them. I wanted them to know how, how do you sew? How do you get style? How do you figure out things and style them together to make something that is so creative and so beautiful? And that's how my journey started, just coming up and mentoring the young ones so that my skills don't end with me somebody else picks them up and runs with them to the generations to come and the future. I love that so much, just uh, paying it forward. That's amazing. And, and Dr. Davis, what about you? So my journey actually started when I was at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. So that is where I also graduated from um, with my undergraduate degree. And I went up to one of my professors and I just said, okay, can you tell me a little bit more about this process? Because I'm truly interested. I enjoyed all my classes at the time. And I really wanted to pretty much like pursue it further because um, I just enjoyed all of my classes. I enjoyed how um, the professors were teaching at the time. So I knew if they could do it, I can do it too. So I definitely wanted to just um, prevail in that sense of taking my career a bit further within fashion as a professor. Mm -hmm. That's great, I love that. And so what steps are you taking to ensure your students learn the history of fashion and keep up with what's happening now? Because that's very different. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. Um, so we try to tackle it from two different ends. Of course, through curriculum, we do literally have a history of fashion course. 
Um, and then some of the projects that we just incorporate in the other classes that are current events uh, projects that they have to complete. Um, and then what we try to do at Bowie is we try to uh, push the students out into real life experiences. So they're on the set of movies or behind the scenes of a fashion show, different things like that where it's hands on on the job training um, that they do have to take what they learn from their history and incorporate it to your up to date um, experience. That's great. And what about you, Dr. Davis? So one thing that um, is pretty similar as well with the professor from Bowie State University, we definitely try to infuse the curriculum with um, things that's actually going on currently in the industry. And but before what I really love about like our fashion program is that we have these introduction classes to fashion. And one thing that I do is before the textbooks, I definitely allow the students to know that, you know, fashion just didn't start with these designer brands. So I definitely create like this timeline of letting them know from the 1700s leading up to um, what is going on now currently with the industry trends that, you know, it just didn't start with the Chanel, it just didn't start with the Prada mm -hmm. because, you know, students are so focused on these designer brands, but they're forgetting like where it actually started from. So that's one thing that I do and that I truly love because that opens the eyes um, for the students to say, oh, okay, so there are some background things that the textbooks are not really showing. So I definitely wanted to just create a timeline for the students to let them know that, you know, fashion did start in the late teens, um, 18 to 1700s. So you can definitely learn a bit more why you're so passionate behind certain things if you know more of that history. That's fantastic. And Dr. Apiri, your department was awarded a grant from HFR's nonprofit organization, ICON360. Can you share with the students watching some of the things that will be put into place using the funding? All right, thank you, uh, Ms. Harris. Uh, first, I'm so grateful for this fund that uh, we got for our institution. And uh, my students, as one of my students, uh, gave um, a support letter. She was so excited and she was looking forward to have this money really help them. So one way this money is going to help my students is given that uh, my students, most of them are first generation graduates, limited funds. And when I give them design projects, for example, have almost three, four weeks, they do not have the resources they need. They do not have the fabric. They're telling me, or oh, Dr. Piri, I have to wait for my paycheck. And the paycheck takes forever. So after two weeks, you ask them, they say they had a more emergency compared to create getting fabric and getting the patterns they need for the project. So this fund will help my students because they'll get the materials they need on time. They'll get the resources they need, the fabrics, the, the patterns, the fabrics for the, for, the, for the dummy project first and then get fabrics to enable them to create the final project for their, for their exam. So, it will go a long way and also giving us an opportunity to create a fashion show. So students will be excited because besides just uh, uh, creating, getting the money for their, uh, for their supplies, they'll get the scholarships to enable them to continue with their tuition and then they will participate in the fashion show. And in the fashion show, we'll have prizes, we'll sit together and see what can they win. And as individuals, when you have a prize to look forward to, you are, you are motivated. And given that our, my students are really motivated, this will be an extra motivation to come up with creative ideas, develop designs that they can compete for in the fashion show project. And at the same time, win gifts that will enable them look forward to getting a, 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 a career in the fashion industry. So generally, that is what the funds will be helping us. And this is a very, very uh, good 
project. We are looking forward to a great semester where the students will come and just come and be told, you don't have to look for the fabric. You're not going to look for the, for the, for the thread. We have everything for you. At the end of it, you have scholarship. <laughs> at, at the end of it, there's a fashion show in the spring where you will show what you have made and they'll Amazing. be so excited and look forward to that. We love, love, love your passion. Thank you so much for expressing in detail where these resources uh, will be invested. And, you know, we remember a very thoughtful and emotional conversation with Danielle Brown about fabric and resources and upcycling. And Danielle, you really educated us on some of the investment from even the faculty to to support how students were, were needed the investment. And will you share actually where ICON, where the ICON 360 resources will be invested um, in your program at Bowie State? Because you really, you really enlightened us. And, and that was actually one of our um, favorite conversations. So among many, but you really changed our, our perspective. Oh, wonderful. Um, I will have to 100% agree with um, Professor O'Peary. It's 85, 90% of the problem that we bump into with our students is just lack of resources. So this, uh, you know, grant is life changing for them, literally, it is between them passing classes. Um, and, and I get the same thing, um, Professor, where it's, you know, I'm waiting for my paycheck, you know, I'm putting myself through classes, I'm waiting for my refund check, you know, different things like that. So this has limited, and we've had this conversation before um, with Ms. Harris, this has limited our students from just being able to graduate on time because they needed an extra semester to save up money for resources just to sew their fashion line for their final project. So this is really gonna open up um, just the doors that should already be open for them. Um, and you know, as professors, we do what we can, but eventually our pockets are empty also trying to pour into our students. Um, so with this grant, of course, we will be able to supply the individual scholarships um, that they so severely need um, in order to just get through the semester. And then, of course, just providing those resources. Um, we're going to create a fabric room. I've already had the space. I just needed the money, so I'm waiting for that. <laughs> and then, you know, of course, just updated um, software. You know, when they're going into the workforce now, their software is different than when we graduated. So that computer-aided design, they need that, and that software is expensive. Um, um, so it's really opening a lot of doors where students don't have to sit, choose, you know, they don't have to choose between, okay, do I try to get resources and graduate or do I pay for gas to get to class? And it's really that big of a difference. So fantastic. And my last question is for Dr. Davis. What do you hope for the future of HBCU fashion programs? I really do hope that the HBCU programs will continue to emerge the technology for the students because I have also experienced that students will literally switch their majors because our programs do not have the equipment that they need um, or they will transfer to other schools, um, predominantly PWI schools. They are leaving to go to those schools because they have more technology than what you know, the HBCU programs actually does for fashion. And just as Professor Brown said, um, the industry is totally different from when we actually started. So having that computer aid design, that's what I do hope that, you know, emerging um, technology and education can com continue with HBCU fashion programs so students can be more competitive within the industry. Amazing. Ladies, thank you so much for um, a rich and dynamic conversation. Uh, we are proud to support your universities and we look forward to continuing to invest. Um, enjoy the rest of your week and enjoy the summit.